Hey everyone and welcome back to this review series of Cody Ziegler, Spider-Man Miles Morales. Today, it's issue number three. It's been highly anticipated. Will Miles finally meet his match, Raneem slash Rabble? Will he learn a powerful lesson? Will I go on a rant at the end of this video? Well, we're about to find out. But before we get started, I'm Jeff. And if you're new to this channel and you like what you see, it only makes sense. Let the YouTube algorithm know by dropping a quick like. And if you like what you see here in general and you want more comic book and superhero related content, well, it only makes sense to subscribe and maybe even click that bell so you never miss a single episode. Now that you're locked in, let's get into it. This issue starts off with some exposition. We finally get Renim's backstory. We learn about everything. We learn how she's got here, what's led her to this moment, her motivation, her pain, everything. Renim's parents originally met in the country of Jordan and eventually immigrated to Brooklyn, where the two would start up a business at a convenience store, the one that we saw in issue number one. Eventually, of course, Renim was born. She explained that she had an almost preternatural connection to machines and would even fix her father's cash register as a toddler. But eventually, tragedy struck as Renim's mom fell ill and eventually passed away. Her father was never the same. Of course, to help support her family and give her father something back, Renim decided she wanted to put her gifts with technology to good use. But no one seemed to like her ideas. And for this next part, when I tell you that my ego went through the roof, your guy right here, prediction God. Don't ever doubt me. Don't ever doubt me. Yep, that's right. My prediction going all the way back to issue one has come true. Renim was in fact trying to get into Brooklyn Visions Academy just like Miles. Oh, God, I am so good at this. Don't you ever doubt me. Don't you ever question me, okay? Anyway, I'm just gonna put my ego to the side for now. This moment gives Renim a sense of hope, a chance that she can actually have some opportunity to change the fortunes of herself and her family. And the way the panels in this match her words in a sad, a nasty way of her dreams being thrown away to chance is beautiful in a way, to be honest with you. Vincentini is just in his bag with this one. And she, of course, in a twisted sort of way, blames Miles. And then Starling cuts in, kind of trying to undermine her whole past. So Tiana keeps digging into Renine with the big theme of this book saying, trauma doesn't give you the right to take it out on others. And that she isn't the only one who's had these experiences. Renim tries to correct her. She knows that she isn't an anomaly. She knows it's a broken system that puts her and so many others in impossible situations. She also mentions that her dad actually hasn't been around and left her the shop. So she's basically been supporting herself as a teenager. So Tiana tries to reason with her because if she knows that it's the system that's brought her to her knees, why take it out on Miles? Renim feels that he's an important piece of the puzzle. And then Tiana probably correctly points out that she may or may not need some professional help. Then we cut back to Misty and Miles fighting off Scorpion. Misty's bullets are useless against Scorpion and his new armor. Even Miles' venom blasts aren't bailing him out like he's used to. And I just want to give somebody some quick props for this. Cody Ziegler, thank you. Thank you for not being a lazy writer and just using his venom blast to get him out of every single goddamn situation in a fight. Thank you so much. Let's continue. After getting knocked to the side, Misty finds Bumbler's gun to even the odds. And just as I compliment Cody Ziegler, there is still some very cheesy writing here. And I, I mean, it's getting better. I'm gonna say it's getting better. I'm trying to stay positive. I think we all need to take a breath. <sighs> stay positive. Zen, people, zen. Okay, let's continue. And just when they had Scorpion on the ropes, Agent Gal comes in to undermine everything they just did. Miles completely embarrasses everyone in this exchange. Gao tries to flex on them, but Misty has bigger connections in Mayor Luke Cage. As Miles leaves the building, he realizes Tiana hasn't texted him. And before he can even think about that, Genki calls him freaking out about someone coming after him, and Miles rushes to get him once Genki drops a pin to his location. And when Miles gets there, Genki is nowhere to be found, of course. A totally unprepared Miles is thrashed by Rabble and all her tech. She reveals herself to him and has a sort of typical supervillain monologue, and that's where the issue ends. Now here's my thing with this whole interaction. I don't feel 
that the impact that they were going for here was really felt at all. This felt like it was supposed to be some kind of epic reveal, but the fact that we already kind of saw her, the fact that we got so much of her backstory, the fact that she has kind of been along for the ride so much and that she's been kind of given so much agency in this story has kind of ruined her reveal because the way they reveal her here is like, it's a surprise. And obviously to Miles, it's a surprise, but to us as the reader, we already know so much. We've already seen her have an epic reveal, which I thought was pretty good with her and Starling. And then we get this and it just doesn't have the same impact at all. I think even the words that she said to Tiana felt more impactful in a way. I don't know about you guys, but that's how I felt personally. And overall, my thoughts on the issue, I just... <sighs> I was expecting a lot more. I mean, I think we've had enough buildup, we've had enough exposition, we've had enough to set the stage here to at least kind of, you know, build to something. This didn't have to be the penultimate, this didn't have to be sort of the climax of this story or whatever, but it felt like it was supposed to be and it really felt like they dropped the ball. Like, yeah, Renine's story in this was really good. Her backstory, I think, was told very well. They didn't over explain to you or anything like that, which is what I really hate. Or maybe even they needed to put that whole storyline in a separate issue. But that's tough because I feel like they also told you everything that you need to know. Like you don't need to know much more than what they told you. They basically gave her story without over explaining to you, without overdoing it in any way and giving you all the details that you need to know. And I think if they extended that, then there's a problem because then we're just getting too into the weeds here. But it almost feels like this whole issue should have just been about Raneem and I think that would be tough to do because they did explain her story so well, I think. And I think it made her a little bit more empathetic. But then the problem is, is that she kind of, you know, stomps on that a little bit because yeah, sure, people are flawed. And of course a kid is gonna be flawed, but like, it's hard to kind of feel empathetic for her because it's like, Renine, you're so close, but yet you just completely like make a U-turn when it comes to like saying, oh, I understand I'm not an anomaly. I understand that the system is the problem here. The system actually affects Miles too, or at least it feels like you should know that, but then she takes it out on Miles. A guy who would also be definitely a victim of the system. I mean, he was in the same lottery as you for a reason. Like it really just feels like a very petty revenge thing, but everything else in her story doesn't feel petty. It feels like she was hurt, yeah, sure, but she was hurt for very valid reasons. To me, like, a villain can't be so far off in that way, especially with her. It just doesn't really make sense. It doesn't, it doesn't feel right. And in so many ways too, I'm sure I'm not spoiling anything at this point, she feels like she was supposed to be the comics version of Finn. Finn is a great character. Finn has a great and clear motivation and a good kind of attachment to Miles. And it's just like, bring her into the comics. Who cares? You can tweak a few things, of course, and maybe you can even make her a little bit more like Raneem. But Raneem feels like she's petty, but also has too many red ideas to be petty. Like it just doesn't make sense here at all. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's it. That's really all I got to say. I'm pretty frustrated at this point. I. I really thought we had something good going here. Ziggler seemed to be creating something good. His writing seemed to be pretty good. It almost seemed like it was better than the last two writers in Bendis and Ahmed, but man, it really just seems like he's fumbling the bag here. And as a diehard Miles fan, as a person who knows the potential that he has, who knows that he can be a really special character, I'm just, I'm so, so drained from all these stories where he just, it just doesn't seem like anything's happening for him. Um, and it kind of seems like based on every other comment I've gotten on my other videos, you guys kind of feel the same way. Keep dropping those comments. Let me know what you guys feel. You can tell me if I'm wrong, if I'm off about something. Drop a like if you like this video. Make sure to subscribe, ring the bell so you know when the next review is out because if this keeps going south, we're probably making another video about Miles and his time as a comic book character and a lot more comic book content is coming. So uh, yeah, I'm pretty dejected right now, but um, yeah, I guess we'll see you in the next one. I am going insane. <laughs> I'm losing my mind.